the woman was so viciously entangled in the tentacles that the ice sword in her hand had long since fallen down, but the tentacles became more and more excessive, and even gradually wrapped around her whole body. Pars looked evilly at the woman. You say you'll let go and you'll let go. You think too highly of yourself. Could you have run away from me after I put you down? Not wanting to give up, Elsa reached out her hand and waved it randomly to conjure up ice magic. Apparently her actions had angered the man, and within the labyrinth of his dominant heart, there was still resistance to escape. So more tentacles reached out to her, directly interrupting the energy she was struggling to gather. As they continued to tense, it left Elsa somewhat mildly unable to catch her breath. Sure enough, off. The tentacles instantly wrapped around her entire body and continued to tighten around her. The cow was going to leave it at that. After all, she was about to become his lordship's future wife. But even if she becomes his excellency's favorite, she'll never let him go. The earl snorted coldly at once. Then let me see how you will not let me go. Now that you mention it, I remember there's something I've been forgetting to tell you. He bared his fangs in a sinister manner. The lord is only interested in your flesh. After you become a dependent, your current soul and personality all of it will be replaced so let the tentacles wrap all over her and you can sleep in the darkness of your cage at that moment at his back a huge ice rock appeared and was coming towards him the count suddenly felt that something was wrong and looked viciously behind him at the same time he quickly turned around and summoned his tentacles to come and answer the battle not expecting them to instantly splatter countless blood the moment the tentacles were summoned back to him elsa fell to the ground with a vacant look in her eyes the count looked across the room in displeasure what are you doing launching an attack on me again? It's her mother, Lilith. Don't you know what I'm doing? You never told me that Elsa's soul and personality would be replaced. With that she quickly rushed forward, raising the weapon in her hand to strike at him in anger. But her hands, which had raised her weapon, were quickly entangled by the man's use of his skill. Her angry countenance gave a start, and it was evident that she had forgotten the man's native. Sure enough her body fell backwards uncontrollably after the man's easy strike. She slumped to the ground in agony, the excruciating pain preventing her from standing at all. What's the point of you doing this? Creatures other than me are restricted. Then in other words, no one can beat me in my world. Besides, what's the point of sacrificing a daughter if you're going to be appreciated by that lord? But if Elsa's soul is erased, what's the difference between that and being dead? I didn't expect the Count to just yank her hair up and slam it hard into the ground, if it weren't for the fact that His Excellency only wants a virgin. I'm afraid you'd have to be sacrificed too. It's hard for me to put up with you for so many years without touching you. It's just as well. Let's enjoy this attractive body tonight. Lilith suddenly realized that it wasn't right to make her daughter do things she didn't like. If there is a God, please save us from this darkness. At that moment there was a sudden appearance above him, and the Count stopped his movements to look upwards. Unexpectedly. The man didn't even wait for his thoughts and quickly used his skills to charge towards him. At the same time, a huge explosion rang out, instantly stirring up countless thick smoke on the ground. Lilith looked ahead in surprise. Was it her daughter's beloved who had come to her rescue? Sure enough he rubbed his head in embarrassment. He had managed to land on his feet. The Count stood behind him in dark thought, and for a moment was at a loss for what to say. He skimmed in shock that he had managed to land so safely within the labyrinth of the heart. Is it for that man that Elsa is trying to defy herself to escape the marriage? Then why not kill the man and solve the problem yourself? You stood in place and rubbed his eyes, not realizing that this was actually a labyrinth and garden. Before he could finish admiring it, a violent sound came from behind him. You had to turn to look across the room, and sure enough the energy came even more quickly. Black shadows instantly swept around him, leaving him no time to fight against them. Suddenly the black shadows split apart violently, forming a huge encirclement towards him. I didn't realize that Yao was standing still, waiting for the danger to come with a handsome movement. At this he glanced lightly at the Count, his eyes revealing disdain only to see him instantly manifest a longsword, his talent energy violently erupting. You walked forward with one hand in his pocket handsomely. The dark shadows around him had long since been cut off, but Sylph, possessed within the longsword, sounded quietly, so you looked towards it suspiciously and asked softly what had happened. Sylph's face was in excruciating pain. Those shadows were eating away at me. This question was obviously a bit difficult. How could it encroach on the Excalibur sword spirit, the shadowy figure in front of them? However, sneered darkly, as if mocking their incompetence. Shadow magic loves to devour good things, and it seems that this sword spirit must be very tempting. 
You actually froze when he saw his appearance and actually stared blankly at the Count. You look like the portrait of the Count of Terror on the wall of the castle hall. The Count was instantly annoyed. You've got a lot of guts. Once I've disposed of your little rat, the sword spirit in your hand should be mine as well. And remember, before you die, my name is not Scaredy Cat. Rather, it was the mighty Earl of Palstead, not a figure he could mention at will. But when his skills came to the man, the man was actually planning to respond with a straight face. Sure enough with the impact of the skill the ground was actually smashed into pieces. The Count of Fear of Death laughed out loud. So what if a man could find the location? He would still be killed. But he suddenly stopped laughing and looked across the pandemonium in disbelief, only to see a figure revealed in the smoke, slowly walking towards him. As expected, Yao's present was unharmed. He grasped the Earl's sharp weapon with one hand. Whether you call it special fear of death or special fear of death, Yu's fingers exerted a little pressure, and that one sharp weapon began began to shatter. As his energy erupted, the ground and even the entire castle exploded instantly. After all, I'm afraid of the death of the Count in front of other people. Jean gone masturbate other people's sword spirit. The Count raised his head quietly in fear, not realizing that he was even more shocked by what lay before him. He watched as Yu Jing disappeared in front of his eyes, suddenly twisting his head from side to side to observe the, sure enough, Yao suddenly appeared in front of him, accompanied by an angry scolding that he was simply going too far. The Count muttered in continual astonishment that it was utterly impossible to walk out of the, within the labyrinth of the heart. The attack power of creatures other than him should be exponentially weaker. But from what happened just now, it seems you're the summoner from the demon world. Right, but where are Elsa and Edel now? The Count, however, was silent, but inwardly he pondered who it was of whom he spoke. Suddenly the corners of his mouth hooked up, so the girl name was Egil, but the ground is suddenly thick with white smoke. A great battle is about to be triggered. The Count looked at the man grimly. Don't worry I'll let you see her soon. After he saw the Count's evil smile, he couldn't help but wonder what this guy was up to again. But he suddenly felt a hint of something wrong. There was an armored warrior behind him who wanted to make a sneak attack. When you realized that something was wrong, he jumped up easily to avoid the fatal blow. He looked down with a grave expression. The weapon held in the armored warrior's hand. It's Egil's battle axe. How is this possible? But before he could probe again, the armored warrior actually took dozens of steps backward. The bulky armor did not see the face at all. Only what appeared appeared to be shouting from within. You suddenly shouted Egil at it, wanting to see how the other would react. I didn't expect the armored warriors in front of me to be standing still without any movement, but they've quietly raised their weapons and are eagerly planning to attack you. You instantly condensed his gaze. There was an aura of the undead about them. Then a hand suddenly rose upwards. So it was a gesture to start a call to arms, and countless armored warriors rushed forward. But fearing that there was Agir within the undead, he just kept dodging. But except for the one with the battle axe, the other undead were destroyed by him, only to see him slice through with a hand slash. The undead fell to the ground in response. As he became more skilled, the undead were eliminated faster. Suddenly the undead with a battle axe in hand rushed forward, and you just happened to be looking for her. So he suddenly reached out and grabbed the weapon, stopping the tomahawk undead from moving forward. They stood still, but Yao's aura had long since outdone it. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Even Egil is probably just being manipulated. I didn't expect that after opening it. Yao would be a bit overwhelmed. I saw that Egil's eyes were empty, frozen as if he had no reaction whatsoever. Yu's body trembled with fear, and his incredibly soft voice called out to Egil. But the other party didn't respond, and the shadowy figure above him even began to laugh sorrowfully. The Count controls them and can bring Egil back from the underworld as long as he doesn't block Elsa's betrothal. So which of these women you care about are you going to choose? The woman bared her slim ankles and lifted her feet to walk slowly towards the man. She hurriedly covered her body. How could the man she missed so much be here? You was at a loss for words. I just came in not long ago. I didn't know you were taking a bath. Elsa looked at him and laughed happily, completely ignoring the wiping of her wet hair. A dark shadow suddenly appeared behind her, warning her that the Lord knew that she could have a big atmosphere. However, Yao is very excited. I came with Egil to look for you. She's downstairs now. But Elsa suddenly changed her face, and in a hard tone tried to drive them away. Although she could do nothing about her situation, she still didn't want her friends to worry about her. The ring was just a souvenir. I didn't think you'd find it, but she left the school without a word. She has serious and unspeakable reasons. She's going to marry that man, so she won't have to worry about them anymore, and she'll have all the riches and honor in the world. 
However, you didn't believe it for a second, because he actually saw Aisha shedding tears of pain. She hurriedly looked down and wiped away her tears, knowing that she had tried so hard to hold back the, you sighed helplessly. When did she become so condescending? He stroked Elsa's cheek, and to fool others he had to fool himself first. And my dear Miss Elsa, you're such a bad actress, what's going on? Elsa states that it's all her fault. She shouldn't have let Egil give him the ring so that they might not come looking for it. But the Lord Aisha is talking about is the one who rules the demon race above the demon emperor. You don't understand the horror of that lord. He's the true and powerful ruler behind the demons. And there's no way she's with them. The chimera's instinct is to suck the life out of humans. Even though she's a half-blood chimera. It's only when she has an intimate relationship that she sucks the life out of the other person. You smiled unconcernedly. So what if you are a chimera? demon or human, but as far as I'm concerned, my Elsa is Elsa, and there's no changing that. As for the Lord and all that, will you come with us now and get out of here? Aisha's cheeks blushed slightly as she held out her hand, just as she was about to try and respond to Yu's question. The wall clock suddenly chimed at full time, and the sound was indeed loud throughout the room. I didn't expect the clock in the parlor to clang and ring, and all of a sudden the whole castle was running. Lilith mused darkly, surprised that it was already 12 o'clock. Egil couldn't sit still any longer. What was this woman in front of him talking about? At 10 minutes past midnight the moon is gradually covered by dark clouds. The surroundings of the castle suddenly became incredibly eerie, and the subordinates took cover. You! however, was unusually excited in his room. It was always such a pleasure to spend time with the beautiful Elsa, but Elsa was running around in a hurry. She had to get changed or everyone would be in danger. You could only obediently turn around and ask her what was going on with his head full of questions, but there's no time to explain. All he needs to know is that he's in for a fight, so he didn't talk too much. After all, as a man he should protect the woman he liked. I didn't realize that Elsa was so handsome, standing there calmly like a female general issuing orders. Sure enough, Yao was instantly attracted to her. His face flushed red as he froze in place, apparently not explaining too much. Elsa got up and moved forward to lead you towards the door. At this moment, you suddenly grabbed her wrist, but one hand quietly went behind her back and took out something. He gently puts it on the woman and nods with satisfaction after a closer look. This jade bracelet is useful for people with ice magic, and I thought at the time that it would be perfect for you Elsa. Sure enough she thanked you, she did like any gift he gave her, and the jade bracelet won't wilt like a rose, which I think is great. She walked shyly and quickly to the door. After all, she had to hurry to turn to Egil. I didn't realize that just after I opened the door, there was a gust of white smoke coming from outside the door. You looked around in confusion. Where the hell did this thing come from? The corridor was in a state of pandemonium, but there was not a sound in the large castle. Only white smoke slowly drifted away and was accompanied by a hollow inquiry as to where this place was. So Elsa hastened to explain that this is the labyrinth of the heart created by my stepfather, whose natural magic is world replacement. No wonder even though the world shifted, you didn't notice any signs of the realm being opened, so this was a space, but you didn't have time to think about it, this labyrinth of the heart aside, but Egil was still downstairs, now we have to find Egil, do you know the general layout of the labyrinth? Elsa lowered her head guiltily and was just about to admit that she wasn't sure when she suddenly felt something was wrong, so she turned sharply to look over, and her expression became uncontrollably frightened, ahead, within the white smoke, a dark figure was slowly walking towards Elsa, apparently Elsa was wasn't going to sit around and wait for her to die, and drew her ice sword in a handsome manner, intending to meet the battle. You obediently stood next to the beautiful woman, all waiting for that lord to arrive. I didn't realize it was her mother, Lilith, who had come to remind her that it was 12 o'clock. She reminded her daughter in a hard tone that it was time for you to go to your room and go to bed, or you know what's going to happen. Elsa humbly lowered her ice sword, looking incredibly uncomfortable but unable to refute her mother's. At that moment you suddenly stretched out his hand to to try to stop it. After all, with him there was no way he would allow Aisha to be harmed. But Lilith grinned sinisterly, not caring about Yu's movement forward. After preparing herself for what she was about to face, Elsa whispered an apology to her opponent. I hadn't expected her to apologize to her mother, causing Lilith's eyes to widen in sudden and overwhelming dismay. Aisha raised her ice sword and looked grave. I've decided to face it together with you. Not only does she have to face it with her friend, but she has to escape this suffocating prison together. Yu was calm on the outside but incredibly excited on the inside. The serious Aisha is really cute, yet she was still persuading her mother to let go. After all, she and her father had been so deeply in love even back then, but all that awaited her was the speedy attack of a concealed weapon, which instantly passed by her ear. 
Lilith understood precisely why she didn't want her daughter to make the same mistake. Humans were still too fragile. But why does Mother Superior always secretly miss her deceased father late at night? Lilith froze in place, surprised that her daughter had discovered her deep secret. Elsa says it's a matter with her mother, so let her settle it herself. Lilith actually gathered her energy angrily, and countless ice picks waited behind her for the attack. She had warned her own daughter to go to bed when it was late, but Aisha didn't want to compromise and swung the ice sword in her hand with the intention of fending it off. Sure enough, the huge barrier instantly shattered countless ice picks, and you, as a man, even hid behind her. Lilith looked at her daughter in shock, having taken her ice pick with ease. Although it wasn't her full strength, normally that level just now should have been enough to make her fall to the ground. But the bracelet on his daughter's hand was actually a cold jade bracelet that could be called an ice divine artifact. Lilith pondered how she got this when her daughter's voice rang out from across the room. Mother, if you insist on stopping us, then I'm sorry for what I'm about to do. So she too manifested a powerful ice pick, intending to meet her mother's subsequent surefire blow. But Lilith confidently evoked a sneer. How my dear silly daughter, you haven't forgotten that your mother, I'm a chimera born of pure blood, only to see the energy around her explode, and two wings grew out of her back. She stood still after her evil incarnation, looking down with scorn at the stupidly stupid duo below her. I never had the chance before, but today, Today I'll show you the true power of our phantom. Mother-sama really did intend to take your side, and Aisha could only bear it all through gritted teeth. Yu's gaze began to turn serious. Dare to let his woman get hurt, then don't blame him for being rude. By now, the white smoke has enveloped the entire castle. Egil looked around confused with his weapon in hand. Where the hell are you and Elsa now? How is it that when the bell stopped, the parlor became this shithole and Lilith was gone? Apparently she can't be thinking yet. A million bats have appeared on her upper right side. Egil looked up momentarily, and the castle had become so strange for a moment. But the man's voice rang out, and how could there be a little mouse in his own labyrinth? She looked at the man in sudden shock, and her expression actually began to tense when she felt the dangerous energy. But the man says don't be alarmed. Lovely Miss Mouse, welcome to the labyrinth of his heart. He is the supreme master of this place, the most powerful energizer of all time. Polstered, smoke is rising slowly from the corridor on the first floor. Lilith looked towards the two who were trying to escape. With one easy blow they would surely die. But you waved his hand help helplessly, indicating that Mother Sama had misunderstood. In fact, he didn't belong to humans, but now it was too late for them to beg for mercy. But before it was his turn to, she slowly looked over at her baby girl, who was indeed standing there in some fear. So she flew forward in an instant, stating that she had to discipline her rebellious daughter before she could do anything about it. Aisha raised her ice sword in advance after she was ready for it. She quickly charged forward as well. After all, she wasn't going to succumb to anyone again. You sighed helplessly. Why don't you guys just listen to me finish my sentence? But they were already charging towards each other. One purple, one blue, one good and one evil. Lilith held out her hand to gather her gift magic, intending to teach her unaware daughter a lesson. Aisha's icicle attack didn't hurt in the slightest, only to see her mother easily stand her ground against the... She was furious for a moment, her face fierce as she contemplated her next plan, so she used her energy to instantly jump above her and quickly leaned down and raised her ice sword towards her mother. But when she was about to touch her mother, she realized that the person in front of her had fled the place as a black shadow. Elsa was in a state of dread, and shuddered to think what she was about to face. Sure enough mother suddenly appeared with a disdainful face. I'll never give you a chance to sneak up on me. Too late. She quickly dodged in front of her daughter and lifted her hand to strangle her with force. You walked around below helplessly. What the hell was he going to do to save Aisha? He had to look up and gaze above him and keep thinking of a perfect plan. Sylph said she was very puzzled. Why didn't Master just go and help Sister Elsa? You, however, became incredibly devastated. Lilith might be his future mother-in-law. It would be bad if she didn't hit him hard enough. But then again, how do we get out of here with all this smoke? Apparently in the presence of these things, Elsa could not think of. As she looked down in confusion, her body felt like it was them flying upwards. But as she watched, she realized that they were falling fast. Lilith was in a good mood at this point, explaining that's why this could be called the Count's greatest labyrinth. Aisha quietly opened her eyes to look around the labyrinth after she felt the drop. But the white smoke in front of us is so thick that it makes you afraid for no reason at all. So she instantly conjured up an ice sword, intending to surprise her mother. Sure enough, Lilith immediately noticed her daughter's movements. But at the moment it was to no avail. I didn't realize that 
Elsa's sharp swing of the ice sword had left her mother with no choice but to let go of her hand. But Elsa had no intention of fighting her mother, and had already dashed quickly to the other side of the room. At this point, the castle has become a labyrinth of weirdness to outsiders. Unexpectedly, as the smoke was blown away, it revealed its true horror, the evil. Big Mouth Cannibal Flower, rows and rows of armored soldiers with weapons in their hands, as if waiting for their masters to issue orders. Lilith swung her wings to catch up and began to think as her body landed smoothly and slowly. It's the first time she's been in here, and based on where she's been, she can't be far. But even if you leave here, where can you escape to? If you still decide to leave, then only endless despair and misery await you. But at that moment the white mist grew thicker and thicker, as if it were trying to surround the creature. Lilith was still persuading her to be obedient. After all, he was going to show up next a silly child. Aisha, who was called a silly child, had already been secretly looking around, searching for a way out. Just then a black tentacle rushed over and instantly wrapped her ankle around. Aisha looked down with a bad feeling, and as expected, she was caught. She stood frozen in place, looking fearfully at the wildly swaying tentacles in front of her. As expected, she did not resist at all, and her body was instantly entangled by countless tentacles. A man appeared here and walked slowly. Elsa looked at the man in front of her, her eyes instantly becoming overwhelmed with shock. The man's gaze was cold as he looked at her, and he had caught another little mouse yet. This man is a liar. A woman will lose her soul and personality if she marries an adult. Apparently her words displeased the man. The tentacles around his body even instantly tensed. He'd scared in displeasure. It's true that bitches have no other ability but to talk too much. But Aisha is still unconscious, unable to know the situation of Yao. The Count looked downwards without any comment. You have to do this deal anyway. Don't blame me for not reminding you. There's no escaping from the labyrinth of my heart. But what's happening to the man below? Why is there a suffocating pressure? I only saw you snort coldly, but the thick smoke surrounding his body turned into strange energy. His gaze instantly became serious, easily evoking his fourth seal. Unexpectedly, the energy around him changed instantly, and the energy was instantly absorbed after he unsealed it. The Count was afraid of death, but he was terrified that he still had a plan. Obviously impossible. A human would never be able to release this kind of pressure. This guy is not human at all. He must get out of here. Cannot wait a moment. The Count threw his captives down as he ran away. So Yao reached out helplessly to pick up the two beauties before he could do anything about it. Lilith is still conscious. She apologized to you that she did wrong, but she pleaded for Yu's help. She must take Elsa out of here safely. You soothed her gently, and then said that not only would he take Aisha away, but you would be safe as well. He doted on Aisha and looked at her sideways. As for that Count who was afraid of death, I will make him regret coming to this world. The Count of Fear of Death had already reached the periphery, and a red hole appeared above him. As long as he gets out of the hole, he'll seal off the labyrinth of the heart. No matter how strong that monster is, it can't escape from him. While he was still feeling pleased with himself, you had already launched his skill to slash at him, and after a huge collision of energies, after the huge energy collision, the Count spat out blood uncontrollably, and his expression suddenly changed to disheveled. How could this happen? In my heart's labyrinth, I am the strongest being. If I'm not mistaken, his power has already exceeded the threshold of this world. But you was already furious and stared at him with growing indifference. The Count thought he was the strongest being in the world, but he shivered at the sight of him. So he decided not to sit back and wait for death, and instantly transformed into a shadowy doppelganger to attack the man. As long as he had the other three, he could replace his original body at will. He didn't believe that the man alone could defeat all four of them. However, the world is unpredictable. As an Earl, there is also a day when he was slapped in the face. He looked at the man fiercely, but he didn't dare to resist anymore. Fruitful you instantly flashed to his side. I've got you. You can't run away. The Count was really terrified. He was trembling and begging the man not to do it. After all, he still has some contacts in the underworld. If he died that little lover's soul. But Yao interrupted his explanation and reminded him in a hard tone that he had no choice. Agir is not my mistress either. Don't misunderstand her innocence. After that he raised the Count again. The energy around him suddenly enlarged. It's just as well that I know someone in the underworld. This power is the same as the one that first appeared and trampled the demon emperor under his feet. Is it the power of the world's origin? It's the first time he's faced fear at such a close distance. Kojo Yusuker shouted at Havis in displeasure. His remaining patience was about to run out. 
out, he instantly grabbed the count with all his might and swung him up with ease. Then he threw him down heavily, yelling at him to show himself or face the consequences. At that moment, in the upper part of the castle, the hard walls began to crumble due to the powerful energy. The count was mercilessly thrown to the ground, his body unable to move. He looked upwards, calmly, and wondered if Harvey's was the Lord. Apparently only his eyes could move, and he had really spotted the movement in front of him, only to see the ground out of a pair of big hands, hard to break the cracks in the ground. After the big hands easily broke open the ground, a black shadow quickly appeared inside. As the big hands continued to rise, the surroundings suddenly became eerie. Unexpectedly, a man was sitting in the center of the hand with a handsome pose. The change that happened in front of him made the Count sit up despite the pain. I didn't realize that Hades, the king of the underworld, had actually descended. However, as the fog gradually dissipated, the king of the underworld only saw the man standing in front of him, but he showed a hint of displeasure and faintly asked him what he was doing. It was rumored that Havis had a tyrannical temperament, and what this guy did just now had already angered him. Something that made the Earl's teeth drop in shock happened. The king of the underworld even ran to the man and pampered him. I haven't seen you for thousands of years. Who would have thought that you'd be so mean to me right away? The Earl was so scared of death that he froze in place. His head was full of questions but he didn't have any answers. Yu Yu helplessly looked at the king of the underworld. Don't make a fuss there is something I want to ask for your help. Havis grinned. You have something to ask me for help. So he quickly found Agir and then quickly came to Harvis. Can you please put this human soul back into his body? Harvey's was puzzled and came forward. Surely it is possible. But I have a question. Why do you have to save an ordinary person? You said no. Because she is my most cherished friend. A rare and good friend. And that's all I have. Harvey's was so disgusted that he was speechless. So after he eased his mood. Since that's the case that's perfectly fine. But I want to have a night of sex with you. You raised the prison fire in his hand. And Hades instantly commiserated. I'm happy to be able to do you a favor. So Harvey's took out the chatterbox book. The the great Lord Harvey's. Actually so glamorous. Apparently Harvey's has no sense. Let it scan that body, searching for a soul to match it. At this point, the book obediently shut up fully demonstrated their invincible ability. Suddenly Harvey's eyes a beat, seems to have found something. Sure enough, a person's name appeared on the book, with Eggle's name written on it. It seemed to be her, so a quill appeared in his hand. As soon as the pen touched the book, her name disappeared into it. Agir came to her senses, not realizing how powerful the Hades was. Agir looked around in confusion, not knowing what was going on. But behind her, you couldn't wait and called out to Agir. So she quickly turned around and looked at the man in front of her with disbelief, only to see her suddenly become incredibly aggrieved. Glutinous response to the man. You happily opened his hand to welcome Angel's return. Unexpectedly, Angel had already quickly moved forward, holding his face and kissing him down. In the last second before she died, her mind was all about him. Until that moment, she didn't understand her own heart. She looked happily at the man in front of her. The love in her heart was just crying out to be heard. She thought she had already died. She might as well confess now. It doesn't matter if he likes her or not. She gently touched Yu's cheek. He should have realized her feelings. Right. But you think she's expressing the reunion of her best friend in such a passionate way. She angrily accuses the pervert. He's ruining the good atmosphere. Hades opened his mouth to stop the two. Hurry back inside the body. Don't delay for so long. Apparently Agir hadn't reacted yet and asked who Hades was. But then she found her body. Her eyes instantly widened round. She gnawed on her fingers in fear. It was her own body. She couldn't calm down at all. But you explained that it was his own carelessness that brought Hades to resurrect you. Egil was shocked and pondered. It was hard to understand all these words together. By chance, she realized that she had found out. You! Who are you? So you had to explain. Did not intentionally hide from them. She looked at him suspiciously. She didn't look scared at all. In fact, I'm the one you humans are afraid of. The first apostle. Yusuf, after revealing his heart, he waited for the woman's questioning, but she burst out laughing, which puzzled him. She laughed even more freely, showing that she didn't believe the man's nonsense. I never thought that the supreme first apostle would be a pervert like you, but Agir was not afraid at all, and even came closer to him. Then she happily raised her smile and expressed her sincere gratitude to the man in front of her. You was also impressed by her smile and shyly looked back at the woman. Hades impatiently walked forward, wanting to completely interrupt the two of them. Can't you guys finish resurrecting before you talk? Your bodies are getting cold. 